Thank you for joining this startup Bumpup today. I'm Makiko from Fukuoka City Global Startup Center, and we have Mumu, the director of Startup Center, and Yoshi uh, with us, our, our GSC desk. Uh, before we start the event, I'd like to ask one thing. Please keep your microphone on mute and turn off the video during the event. And we I uh, will post a link for the questionnaire for this event later. So I'll be highly appreciated if you could give us your feedback before you leave. So let me start with sharing today's rundown briefly. Uh, first, we will explain general information of Fukuoka City Global Startup Center and Technopol Estonia. And after our introduction, Tom from Curato shares his experience in Fukuoka as a foreign startup. Then the main session start pitches the pitching, pitching of Estonian startup. So at, uh, I would like to start with our introduction of Global Startup Center. Okay, so Fukuoka. Fukuoka City Global Startup Center is run by the city government. Uh, run by the city government, and we are the contact window and executive unit for foreign startups and entrepreneurs. Our motto is a part of your team. Once you contact us, uh, we are your first team member in Japan. We work with you, we execute projects together, and even more, sometimes we do tasks on behalf of you. Fukuoka City, is, uh, Fukuoka City has 15 partner institutions in 11 countries. We sign MOU to provide mutual support for startups in the region. We signed MOU with Technopol in November in uh, 2016. Enterprise Estonia and Startup Estonia are also our partner institutions. Let me introduce some of merits of starting business from Fukuoka when you expand your business in the Japanese market. The first point, I should say it's because of Global Startup Center. We are the one-stop support center for foreign startups done by the local government. You cannot find such organizations in Japan. The second point is our location. Once you set up the business here, you have the market not only in Japan, it can be extended to Korea, Taiwan, and China, neighbor countries. Fukuoka is the gateway to Asian market as well. The next one is the compactness. The compared to the big cities like Tokyo or Osaka, Fukuoka is smaller, but this is a big advantage of us crowded, less competitive, and because of that, we have strong community. Once you get into the community, it's easier to make new network. Another point should be the cheap living cost compared to other cities. It's important for startups to save your living cost so that you can spend more for developing your business. I like to remark this point as well. We are currently selected by the Japanese government as one of the candidate cities for competing to become Japan's next international financial center. The Japanese government is aware of not only our achievement in the startup, but also the potential as a global city. So let's dig into our services. What Global Startup Center provides you. As you can see, uh, our services are very wide range and available at any stage of your business. Uh, visa is the most important when you live and do business abroad. And startup visa provides you at least six months to one year period to do market research and uh, prepare for starting your business here in Japan before you invest. In cooperation, uh, since we have experience of incorporation, we can give you concrete advices, not only introducing an English speaking incorporation lawyer, we can even support your tax related matters after setting up the company. In case of need, we also support marketing and fundraising, of course. We are now focusing on business matching. 
What I like to emphasize in our business matching, we have strong connection with not only startup, but also big companies. Moreover, we have good relationship with the local government and public organizations as well. So we can arrange very specific business matching, not just in introducing each other. And these business matching services are available for any stage of startups. That means even if you are in Estonia without having a company here in Japan, moreover, without coming to Japan, we are happy to offer our network to uh, find your potential partner in Japan. I'm sure now you're wondering the actual case we have been working with. Uh, let me introduce some of them. Today, I would like to introduce three cases. Uh, the first case is, I would like to start with the case of business matching between Israel startup and the Japanese company. Tapkit is an agri-tech startup from Israel. Uh, they specialize in hydroponics. We got to know them through IIA. IIA is one of our partner institutions in Israel. NTT is the biggest telecommunication company in Japan, as you know. Uh, NTT Agritech Technology is the first company in NTT Group focused on agriculture and ICT. We introduced the unique hydroponic system of TAPKIT to NTT, not only just arranging the meeting, we communicated both parties through entry and supported the communication and initiated to sign NDA for, as for the first step for their collaboration. Our network is broad. We connect with companies not only in Fukuoka, but also outside of Fukuoka if we find any synergies. Our priority is being part of your team and find the best possibility. So uh, the next case is, is about the, uh, the second project is about localization. As you might know about Stigo, uh, Stigo is affordable bicycle in Estonia, but we didn't have the exactly the same vehicle in Japan so that we had to find out the classification of Stigo in Japan. It always happens when you introduce something new to the new market. So we had to understand rules and regulation regarding vehicle. Then found out it's classified as a motorcycle. So then we found another big problem. The biggest problem was indicator rights. Original Stigo didn't have indicator rights. However, motor, motorcycle here in Japan must have them. Since the manufacturer doesn't like to add new system on the existing product, uh, we had to investigate the regulations again carefully to find the best solution with the minimum customization. And it was changing the maximum speed of the steel. We also found an importer for them. And now you can enjoy steel on the public road in Japan. It's on the sale. The next case is, is about finding a partner for pilot project. Uh, ECO, this is also from Estonia. I think uh, you might use this system or your kids is using this system. It's a comprehensive educational platform which connects students, parents, teachers, and administrative. And 80% of schools in Estonia are using these services and we thought it had many possibilities in Japan. This picture was taken at the MOU signing ceremony between Iku and private university in Fukuoka. And actually it was taken in Estonia uh, when we attended Trash in uh, 2019. They agreed to do part of it attended last year, it last year, right? Uh, last year in uh, 2019. They agreed to the part of project together in Japan. We proposed ECO about the part of project in Japan and introduced the university, which belongs to one of the biggest private educational group in Japan. Not only just introducing, we had a meeting with the university beforehand to explain the efficiency of ECO so that it made, uh, it made the first meeting of the two parties very smooth and they agreed to sign the MOU within two months since we met the ECO for the first time. So the pilot project was taking place in the high school of the educational group. 
in end of 2020. Mm. So these are the cases that uh, we, uh, we, we had and we have more cases. So if you have any questions, please uh, contact us. So we like to move on the next uh, next one. I would like to introduce Grete from Technopole. Grete, are you here? Hello, hello. Good evening or good morning to you, depending where you are listening in. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, it was very good and informative overview of how you were operating there. And thank you for organizing uh, today's matchmaking. And just quickly, I'm going to also introduce what we are doing here over at Technopol. So uh, one second as I will share my screen. So uh, we are all about, as mentioned, my name is Grete. I am community manager here at Technopol Startup Incubator and representing today the Technopol. And our main motto is that we are empowering founders. We're taking those early stage teams and helping them to uh, gain investor readiness and support them throughout the process of, uh, of their life cycle. So, but in, uh, in big, so uh, as I mentioned, I do come from the incubator side, but we are all part of a Tallinn Science Park, Technopol, and Technopol is the biggest science and business parks uh, park in the Baltic. So, and our activities are divided into three. So first, what we do is real estate de development. So we have this massive campus where we have startups, corporations, uh, labs, and we have our own team here working right next to Tallinn University of Technology. Then our second focus is we're offering, uh, offering to SMEs and corporates business development services and innovation services. Uh, so that runs from the biggest corporations in Estonia, but also our own uh, scale up uh, companies from our portfolio. And the third one, so where I'm uh, coming from is the startup incubator. And I'm going to focus more about what we're doing in the incubator. So uh, we have operated for 10 years and we, in those 10 years, we have helped more than 400 tech uh, startups to gain investor readiness. Uh, approximately each year we receive around 300 applications and we accept around 10% of those applications to come into the incubation program. So we are quite selective of who we want to work with. Uh, yeah. And we truly increase the success rate of those incubation teams. For example, the global statistics says that 90% of uh, uh, new startups fail on a global level. But uh, if you come, but our track record with our incubation companies is that we see that 60% of them fail, uh, succeed, which means that the increase of uh, the success rate is six times compared uh, to doing a startup without going through the incubation program. And we have an extensive pool of mentors who work with our startups throughout the whole incubation program. So each startup is assigned a key mentor, but at the same time, they have 60 business mentors who to work with. And those business mentors are experienced uh, um, experienced uh, startuppers or investors themselves who work with those teams. And over the time, we have helped those uh, teams get over 23 million of early stage investments. And this is something that we are proud of. That is one of our KPIs. And we truly love organizing different events. So for example, last year, we organized over 200, 125 events. So whether that be hybrid form online or on site. And talking about the extensive mentoring that we give out to our teams, last year, uh, teams have more than 1,800 hours of mentoring. So we really work on one-on-one -on -one with those startups. Uh, so what we are offering to our teams during the incubation program is they get uh, six practical trainings within the span of uh, six months. So they're like... Uh, full day workshops uh, and they go through the six month incubation program that can be extended up to additional six months. So six months is guaranteed to everyone. Some teams even go through 12 months with us. They get a lead mentor who works one on one with them. Uh, the lead mentor is usually an ancient investor themselves. 
And as mentioned, there is like additional 60 expert mentors to choose from for every specific topic they might need. And we do offer a modern and free uh, office space in, here in Technopol for those teams. We have a strong community and strong network of connecting those teams with the relevant key players in Estonia, but also helping them uh, to step outside of Estonia. And yeah, and additionally, we do uh, workshops and events. Uh, so what is the training program? So as mentioned, it's divided into six steps. So teams start out with growth and business model development. Then the next one is all about service and product development. And we have also offering legal training, uh, which covers IP shareholders degree agreement and so on. Uh, then the teams move over to finance. There's always sales and marketing. No team can succeed without this. And the program ends with an extensive uh, pitch training workshop from creating this pitch, pitch from uh, scratch to rehearsing. And the whole program ends with demo days. And we do, as mentioned, offer our teams uh, opportunity to uh, work with international projects. For example, uh, we are currently running Scale Up Champions, which is a deep tech focused uh, program that connects five European countries to create the market expansion opportunities. Uh, we had a NOCA project which connected the Nordic and the Baltic uh, companies to help students create more teams or startups. We have Northbound, which is aimed also at Nordic companies to get them investor readiness. Uh, for example, one of the biggest projects that we're really proud of is the European Space Agency Business Incubator Program. And for example, as we are here today, then Fukuoka is also one of our international partners that we do collaborate with and help teams to step into different markets. And I'm really happy that we do have this collaboration with you. And our team consists of, uh, our incubator team, it consists of really strong, awesome women who are making sure that those uh, tech teams actually uh, get uh, the wings to spread out uh, and fly out into the world. Uh, so if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer regarding Technopo. But if not, then enjoy the ride. I'm sure we're going to have an awesome pitching session today. And I can't wait to hear those pitches. So thank you from my side. Thank you so much, Greta, for your great presentation. Thank you. OK, so let's uh, let me welcome Tom from Curato. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Just bear with me just a second. Yeah, sure. Oops, sorry. Okay, hi everyone. Um, today, actually, I, I want to tell you a few stories. Um, so I want to introduce myself because I introduced myself uh, throughout the stories. Um, actually, sorry, <laughs> sorry, just bear with me just a second. Actually, I'm going to have to do it like this because I've got my notes on the side that I need to do. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, the first story that I want to take you through today is, um, is about following your bliss. Um, when I was 16, my mum asked me what I want to do. And uh, I said, all I really want to do is go traveling. Uh, she said I was too young and that I had to get a skill first. Um, so I studied film and design and multimedia. Um, I mostly studied those things because it felt like the less studying option. It felt <clears throat> the most like playing. So in my early 20s, um, I was working for ad agencies in London and I was working as an ideas consultant. And uh, I really loved the creative aspects of the job. I was earning a good salary. I was living, living with, with friends. I, was, I had quite a lot of disposable income. Um, 
but my work felt very much like sugar coating on top of you know poorly executed products and I couldn't change those uh, so I, I realized I didn't want to spend my life doing that and so I decided to quit everything um, and go traveling and that's exactly what I did now eventually I visited Japan uh, and when I visited Japan, Japan felt instantly at home. Ten years later, uh, I was doing a gallery event. It was like a modern style gallery. And some people from Fukuoka City government stopped by. Now, my gallery was an amazing spiritual success, but it actually turned out to be a massive financial failure. And so a few months later, um, I was actually at rock bottom, like really at rock bottom. Uh, and my phone rang and it was someone from the city and they said we want you to join us on a research mission to London with the mayor they wanted to make Fukuoka a startup city so I joined them to London and my first pitch for my startup Curate my new startup was actually in London at an event organized by Fukuoka City and I met an investor that night and with that capital I actually founded the company and in the years since then, Fukuoka has grown to be the fastest growing startup hub in Japan. And along the way, Fukuoka City has opened up many, many doors. Now, it's not possible to connect the dots looking forward. You've probably heard this quote before. Um, but when I look back, my journey and curate would not be what it is today without Fukuoka City opening a lot of doors. If they hadn't opened the door to an event called B Dash, I wouldn't have met a guy called Iwata san. Uh, Iwata san's the guy that brought Skype to Japan, so a bit of an Estonian connection there. Um, he also worked with uh, Nicholas on um, Atomico, he's the Japan partner for Atomico. And he's invested in us several times as an angel, and he's an active advisor. Now, Fukuoka City, if they hadn't opened the door to Estonia for me, I wouldn't have met Rain Lemberpu. And he's invited me to the, men the Cocoon mentoring program, which has had a profound impact on my personal development. Now, when I look back at all the influential people around Curate today, including our customers and our investors and our advisors. All of these were met through doors that the Fukuoka city has actually opened over the last seven years. Now, this city really does support startups. Um, and if Japan makes sense to you strategically, then I would recommend Fukuoka city with all my heart um, as a place, a great place to live um, and a great place to launch your business either into the Asian market or the Japan market with whatever is suitable for you. Now the third aspect of this um, is actually an insight. Now Ben Horowitz says the company story is the company strategy and what what I take that to mean and what you know he he he, he goes on is that the mistake that a lot of people think is that they think that the story is all about marketing. Whereas we see that the story is actually the strategy. If you make the story better, you make the strategy better. Um, our goal as a company is actually to, br to bring a little bit more clarity into the world. We want you to, uh, to make sense out of confusion. And less fragmentation and more clarity. This is what we really stand for. Uh, as an ideas consultant back in the day, um, it would became really clear that companies with the best culture and companies loved uh, the most by their customers and the fastest growing companies, they all had a very clear sense of purpose. Um, the platform that we create is based on this principle where we all need less fragmentation in our lives in order to grow a business. We need more alignment and we need more control and we need more clarity. And so I'm just gonna introduce uh, our startup. We are effectively the platform that you can use to align your company, to understand your story, which will allow you then to consistently inspire your customers all across the buyer journey, the, the uh, customer journey. And that will ultimately allow you to grow your 
business or whatever metric that is. And so we're a strategy platform, um, which I would invite you all to either email me or to visit curate.com if you want to find out more. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, feel free to ask questions if that's allowed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. And if we get any inquiries, then I'll, I'll connect you to them. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for your great Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on the pitching session. So we'd like to start with Ivy. Ivy? <laughs> Yeah, hi. Hey, hi from me, everyone. Hello. Uh, nice to... Can you hear me? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, cool. So uh, I'm Gus Pronton, founder and CEO of Ivy Technologies. And then we are empowering the infrastructure digitalization with our AI powered mapping platform. Uh, let me just also share my screen so I can uh, get this... Uh, just a sec, uh, new share with the sound. Cool, so I would like to start with, uh, with a short video that introduces uh, what we do and then go on with the presentation. Digitization is sweeping across every aspect of our daily lives in all possible ways. We collect more and more information about the physical world but currently, getting this data in the road infrastructure sector is slow, resource intensive and unsustainable. Backlogs for road maintenance amount to trillions of dollars and they are still growing. Ivy has developed the solution with advanced AI power on-demand mapping technology. We improve predictive maintenance and safety auditing we enable road consultants and asset managers to reduce their operating expenses with zero capital expenditure and produce the data they need to support their solutions and services. Ivy, enabling infrastructure digitization. Come and join our journey on mapping the future. Cool. Um, so um, in Ivy, we are empowering infrastructure digitalization, uh, using the digital data to be one enabler of, of reducing these uh, enormous amounts of backlogs of the road maintenance. Uh, the current situation in, on the market is that actually the road infrastructure management is not sustainable. Uh, the solutions used are piling up the, the road maintenance works and there are not enough budgets available uh, to be able to put all the roadworks in, in, uh, in action. So there must be a smarter way. And in Ivy, we believe the smarter way is using the digital data and uh, road analytics uh, prediction to actually uh, start understanding when the road starts to damage before it actually has got there and therefore reduce the costs of the, of the road maintenance works almost 10 times. Uh, we are utilizing our, our digital platform uh, that can uh, take enormous amount of, of data streams uh, collected on their own infrastructure, either by, by the mobile mapping car mounted system or by the, the UAV drone mapping systems. And we are analyzing through it with our AI powered uh, uh, platform that can then detect when the damages start to occur. So basically we are trying to predict everything ahead, like a few months ahead or few years ahead, and therefore give the, the these, uh, road maintenance associations ability to make smarter decisions based on the data that we provide them. And this could really work out and, and build up the sustainable road infrastructure for the future. And one part of our solution is also hardware, as we saw that uh, the current hardware solutions used in, in this uh, sector are outdated, uh, extremely expensive, uh, up to like half million uh, euros per unit. 
and at the same time very slow and, and uh, labor uh, intensive. So we build up our own hardware component just to support our software platform. Uh, we build it up as easy to set up as possible, uh, packed in two suitcases, sent to anywhere in the world. And uh, it is possible to set up the full system to any vehicle within one hour and start collecting the data. My eight-year-old was actually able to do it. So, so I'm quite comfortable that anyone is, that is, uh, although, yeah, he has a bit of a stronger mindset than, than uh, some people. Uh, we provide also our, our full software package with it. Uh, this includes data capture software in the, in the car. So to make it uh, as uh, easy as possible to collect the data, you just uh, press the enter and, uh, and the system starts to recording. And all, you, all the driver has to do is to make sure that the car passes by safely in the traffic and, and uh, drives through their full road network. Uh, after the data has been captured, the, the, the hard drives are plugged out and taken to the office uh, where our data flow software starts uh, its action. Uh, it then structurizes the raw input of the sensors. Uh, this includes 360 uh, imageries, uh, high accuracy GPS data and uh, 3D scanner, the LiDAR data that will be used to build up the 3D environment of data stream. After the initial data flow is done, uh, all uh, these three data sets will be uploaded to Ivy Cloud, uh, where our uh, algorithms uh, start to work their magic. We are able to detect anything visible uh, on, the, on these data sets, uh, even uh, smallest uh, changes in the payment defects that gives the ability to understand when does the damage start to happen. Uh, we have also built up our own visual interface uh, that includes a uh, kind of a, a data annotation and verification tool set that we use ourselves to make sure that our algorithms will be retrained correctly and then our algorithms will be involved. But at the same time, we provide this visual interface to our customers so they can look the visual data over and use it to other benefits of the road management or city planning. Uh, some part of the history, uh, we are one year old startup, but at the same time, our, our actual um, uh, history goes uh, almost a decade ago. Uh, we started up operating for a small name like Google. Uh, our team was the one who operated Google fleet in uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania over the four years from 2010 to 2014. Uh, that's where we kind of uh, got our uh, first interest and, and our idea of, of start building uh, this product. Uh, in 2015, Google project was ended and, and they took away uh, the toys, our technology. So we felt empty handed and wanted to build our own platform on top of that. In five years, during the 2015 to 2020, uh, we were operating under another company in Estonia, a geospatial mapping company called Regio Regio. And uh, we build up our initial hardware and software uh, components there. From 2020, we were spinned off. And now one year later, we have closed our seed round and now ready to scale up in the world. Our AI is able to handle a massive amount of data streams. Uh, that, that includes not only our own data, sorry, but also... Sorry. sorry for interrupting. We have only uh, half a uh, half minute. And have okay. two discussions, so can we move to the discussion session? Okay, yeah, I thought we have 50 minutes as was written in the in the oh, okay, so uh, 50 minutes in pitching and also discuss uh, soon. I'm okay, sorry. cool. Okay. Cool, cool. No worries. Uh, I think I covered mostly this part already. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, what we are looking for is uh, uh, after our business, our current seed round is now uh, closed. We are looking rather uh, connections and network to road consultant, road engineering, and road surveying companies worldwide, including Japan, uh, to whom uh, uh, we could partner up and uh, get our technology uh, more scaled. So thank you, and uh, happy to take your questions. So in Estonia, uh, you're working with the uh, road uh, construction companies in such company, not like uh, the city government or some public uh, project. 
Yes, um, we don't target the government ourselves. We only work B2B and our, uh, so we work with the companies like uh, road engineering or road consultant companies, some names in, in Europe side. In Nordics, we work with Rumble, for example, uh, that are, is our customer. No, in Norway, Triona. In Central Europe, Strava uh, or Lehman and Partner, uh, Ginger Group. So we only partner up with private companies and provide them our full technology platform so they can provide the benefits to the government and cities. I see. Okay. okay. Hi, uh, thank you for your great group presentations. So, okay. so I understand that you uh, produce in uh, developing the hardware, or original hardware, for the collecting the mapping data. So the, the, if the Japanese clients Introduce the yes services. They have to use the the IB hardware set. Uh, no, not actually. Uh, quite the several of our customers already. Uh, there are so many mapping hardware sets already being used. Uh, so we can also only provide our software package. Uh, our hardware is meant for the companies who don't have their own hardware in place. Uh, for example, Rumble in Finland and Sweden. They are. Uh, using their own hardware that they've been using for the last few years. And now we only provide their, uh, them our AI platform to detect the information necessary. So, so it is possible to use uh, other hardware as well. With the drone mapping, uh, uh, one startup in Estonia, Hepta Airborne, is actually collecting the, the data about the uh, energy uh, electric uh, infrastructure with their own hardware again. And we only provide them a software platform to uh, understand and, and analyze through the 3D data that they collect. So, so it's possible without, uh, we, we try to be sensor and hardware agnostic. So, so uh, after a few years, we don't have a hardware component at all. And our focus is on the, on the data processing uh, platform. Okay. okay, thank you for your answer. I understand that if the company already has the good data, so they can use the data to produce that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. So the, the another question is, uh, so uh, this is a very, very basic question. So, so how do you find the place to repair that load in the beginning? So, I mean, the, where we should to repair the load? So, uh, I didn't understand the question, sorry. So, uh, how do you find out the place to repair the load in the in the beginning? How do, did we find out uh, the flow pray, in pray. the payment? Yeah, yeah. In the payment? I uh, know in the uh, in the in, uh, in the beginning. The so before, for example, the company. So if the the company introduced the services, so. How they find out the place, the which areas they have to repair, so they can sort out the the areas, which areas they have to repair, or not or not. Um, in the in the beginning, I think the the full road just network. The, just 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 a moment, just a moment, please. Of the road is scanning. So the 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 OC means that, you know the, by using this system, how to find the the exact sort of point where we which should be repaired. So what the technology? Because you had you, uh, when I started you had AI, but uh, so the, he's asking for the, sort of the tips. Yeah. 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 So we have. Uh high definition images made for entire uh, infrastructure. We analyze pixel by pixel these images. That's one input. And another input is that we also have the 3D scans. So the LiDAR data is scanning the surface of the road, uh, pointing out uh, each dif differentials in the, in the centimeters, millimeters of measurements. And then we analyze these two data sets together uh, for the uh, kind of a previous years uh, of uh, road maintenance works to understand like uh, where the damages uh, occur and what, what could be the, the, 
uh, like if you we predict one year ahead what could happen with with this kind of uh, road intersections if that answers your questions i'm not sure <laughs> yeah 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 i i think so and uh, so can you also tell the company that for example this point is quite serious and this point is not serious sort of the abc this kind of classification do you have it um, uh, it, it a lot depends on the country to country, how, how we, we can work it out, but we're working out this with the local companies. That's why we are mainly targeting these road consultant companies in each country. So together with them, we, uh, there are quite a lot of standards in place, how these road maintenance uh, uh, surveys have been done in each country. And then our customers is helping us to put together this list of uh, how to prioritize these workloads uh, and how to prioritize the damages. So, so we, we produce the data, but the kind of the, the, the algorithm for calculation of the priorities comes to get working together with the, with the customers in each country. All right, thank you. And uh, today, the, uh, the some the uh, official from the Fukuoka City government participated in this event. I want some question, Okuma-san. So uh, the, this Casper is not targeting to the government, but in Japan, so the, is there any possibility that also the, they can collaborate with the Fukuoka City government or other government? What do you think? Uh, in definitely, I would say yes. Oh, sorry, uh, I, I, sorry, no, no, I'm asking to the one of the city officials. I think the okay. Okuma-san is, <laughs> Okuma is on, online, or not? Yeah, Okuma-san is online. Okuma-san. Are you? Sorry, I think the, the, this is a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. And uh, he's double. Is uh, participating this event. So we will, uh, we will talk to the city government. Then we'll we'll ask their opinion of your project. How we can collaborate with your services. And uh, I think uh, we we might have a at, a at this moment we don't have any direct contact with uh, sort of a road repairing company. But uh, so we might be able to connect them. Okay. So then, so we, we try to find it out, okay? Yeah, this is a, a, a exclusively for the making the road or the sort of payment or sort of repairing road, this kind of company. It's the company name is uh, actually in my mind, and they don't know me, but I don't know them. <laughs> uh, so I, I know them, it's a Maeda Doro, Maeda Road. This is the name of the company, Maeda. This is a big, quite a big company. Uh, let, let's just try and uh, just, so they're waiting for the good news. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank, thanks so much. If you can get me connected, we'll be happy to initiate some, some pilot project. And then the, we can cooperate also with the city official uh, in the pilot project. If it's uh, like a longer term partnership, then we always look some local uh, partners who will be the ones who will actually make the data capturing happen and then and, and make build up these uh, digital data sets from our platform. Yep, great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks so much for your presentation today. Thank Thanks you. so much for this opportunity. Okay. Thank you, Ivy. So we would like to uh, welcome Hav. 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 Konnichiwa. 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 Uh, so we are Cav Solution. Custom H verification. My name is Dmitry. This is my colleague Yuri. Nice to meet you. Uh, so uh, we are making new vertical for customer H verification, and uh, we can be. Yuri, can you proceed for this one? Sure. Can I also the uh, share the page deck here? Share screen. So yeah, it's here. So yeah. So we are at CAS Solution doing the fully automated age and ID verification check on the spot. So the main problem that miners all over the world have access to age restricted items and uh, uh, age verification solution on the market can be easily evaded or fooled by the miners or even too hard to use. For example, in the Japan, you have a smoking cars with the vending machines 
and uh, when you're going to the smoking vending machine you need to swipe identity card or something like that minors or underage people can take that card from friends family or somewhere else and go swipe it so it's not a complete solution and through that retailers who are putting that vending machine cigarette vending machine affect people health by selling age-restricted products without proper client control so our solution is maximally uh, user-friendly, easy to use. It's, it contains only two steps. It's secure. Not only, it cannot be fooled, not only by miners, by people at all. And it's fast. It's verification. The verification is done in a minute. So it's our addressable market. Let's keep it. And our business model is a hardware software, a hardware enabled software as a service. So we are not only providing the hardware, the device that can uh, uh, check your face and your document, we are also providing the verification service through that hardware. So this is our product. It's a H verifier. It can be implemented in any, in, in different use cases. For example, we started from the vending machine and we are providing the age verification service now. It can be implemented to the uh, different sectors as an industry run, uh, like uh, people coming to the working place, looking into the camera, providing the working card, and it's uh, recognized as a real worker and it's enters to the working place. Or if it's a restaurant, bars, clubs, it can be set up on the entrance and be as age verifier is at the adult place, let's say. So it's our competitors or possible partners. They're providing ID verification online services. And the thing is there's a lot of IDs online services while we are doing it on the spot and in a minute. Uh, our advantage is <clears throat> we don't need, we don't ask the end user to take the phone from the pocket, download an app, go through the liveness check of your face took a photo from the both sides of the document we don't need that we are hiring a hardware where you're looking in and putting your document so it's completely easy and user friendly to the customers i mean and the users so also we are hiring the web platform for remote operations with that h verifier so it can check the device it shows the device id you can personalize the name. So for example, if you put the vending machine somewhere in Fukuoka city, so it can have a number or name where it stays, for example, in a shopping center or whatever it is. So it also shows the location, billing configurations of the device, system status metrics, and of course updates. So in short summary, we are using hardware, software, hardware enable software as a service business model. Our customer is returning one, so we are uh, charging per verification, per every verification of the vending machine or on a subscription basis. Our technology is based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's completely child-proof automated h and verification and uh, our hardware is precisely selected and optimized with our own software. Also, the hardware is a modular and easy to integrate. For example, we are having the H verifier here. You can see that is the device. So it installs here on the side of the vending machine. But if I open it, everything is printed on the 3D printers here. The document tray, camera model, the display model, and it's easy to integrate into the existing vending machine. For example, I'm open the vending machine now. There's a lot of places. And for example, there is a, a lot of places to install it on the side of the vending machine. However, we spoke with many different vending manufacturers and they told us they're having a space to integrate our solution into the vending machine. So if to speak about the Japan market, it's better, I believe, to change old system with cards, with cards, with classic cards, with swiping, with with fully completed automated verification that not a, can be fooled by miners and it's extremely uh, big plus for uh, your society 
in the future. And uh, so we have got a verification also, not only the person who is standing in front of the camera, but we also check the document. It is like UV light checked, uh, we see the motor, watermarks on the document, we check the date of birth and we check the expiry date. And for example, uh, we have found a new use case. Uh, it's a QR codes for COVID. So uh, for example, we have got 24 seven gym uh, that works in the night. And uh, uh, this company owner has called us and saying that, have you got a solution for us so that we don't have to hire a person who is working in the night shift? And we said, yes, we have. So uh, once a person comes to the gym in the night and it is fully uh, auto uh, automated, they don't have to hire a person locally to control if the person who is uh, standing in front of the gates is like uh, a person who has got no uh, COVID and uh, it checks uh, QR codes and it says if this person is vaccinated, if PSR test is done or uh, if, uh, if he is not, so he will not enter the gym. So the use cases of this age verification uh, and, ID. Uh, and ID verification is like huge. It uh, depends on the use case. And once we get the assignment from the company, we can adjust it to the uh, technical requirements of the company. So that's what we are doing at CAP Solution. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. So in Japan, mostly, uh, mostly for the uh, ID verification, we use like a driver's license. Uh, yeah. It has a small tip. So if you, I think it's in it's tips inside, right? I'm not sure. Like I, I, I okay, I need to check. I need <laughs> to double check. But in Japan, mostly uh, uh, for the identification, uh, we use a uh, driver's license and also my number card. It's called like ID card. So it, you can uh, like uh, can, can we use those? Uh, most probably you are using ICT system. This is like you take as a car type card or driving license, you just swipe it and uh, you can make the purchase. But actually with this solution, you, I can, for example, I can give my ID card or driving license to Yuri and he can make the purchase by doing this. But uh, so the solution is not like uh, so safe it uh, enables a fraud or automat uh, can be just fooled with it, this one. But once we take about uh, we talk about our solution, it is like a fully autonomous and solution that really can sell item or provide a pass to a, a real person who is standing in front of the camera and who has got the real ID document, uh, driving mm -hmm. license or ID card. Yeah, and if to speak regarding the documents, we developed our own document tray, which is much more cheaper than uh, the document scanners. It doesn't have the screen or glass, so you don't need to clean it at all. And if to compare with document scanner, document scanners cost about 1000 euro in, on our EU market. I don't know about Japan correctly, but for it was our the first document tray. It's red, so you can understand more what it is. You're putting the document here. There is a camera and it checks any document. So we are uh, able to authenticate any document. Not only if you're European, American, Japanese, it doesn't matter at all. So even if tourists comes to Fukuoka, their documents can be recognized. And what is our plus as well? That we are making everything on the spot. We have got our 3D printers. We are confused configuring it in the office. We are modifying all the time. For example, we have a small <laughs> museum here, uh, what we have started with. It was like a bigger machines and this was like uh, hard metal. And uh, so uh, it's like a very <laughs> so a bulletproof. And uh, so uh, it is being modified all the time. We are uh, maximizing uh, the area of the space that we use to make it much uh, 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 much more comfortable and uh, to find more use cases in any in any technical requirements that we get. I understand, like uh, you can read any cards, like uh, 
but how how do you uh, how you, like verify like if I have the card then if uh, how do I say like, how do you verify that this is the person who has the card? Yeah, how we authenticate mm -hmm. the documents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We are uh, as we said we are checking the document under different lights under the basic light and UV light under UV light we are able to see the watermarks. And also our CTO, he is not on the, uh, at the office now. He went to check the solution with the Corona passes we told you. And um, the thing is that uh, we are not only checking the watermarks, we are able to check the NFC also. So we are able to implement, I will show you. Uh, here's the document tray. We are able to implement here the NFC reader and through that NFC reader, we are able to scan the chip and with camera, we are able to look on the MRZ. MRZ, it's uh, uh, numbers and uh, letters on your document, which helps us to read the NFC. So through that, we are 100% are able to authenticate that it's a real document, not under the UV light, but with your NFC also, if it's needed. Also, once a real person comes towards the camera, uh, our camera, it allows to see biometrics of, on the face of the person. So it matches like a 3D photo of a real person. And even for example, if you print out uh, your photo uh, and show it to the camera, it will recognize that is not a real person. And uh, only real person has to come to the camera. It will understand that it is a person, a real person, a human being, and it will take a 3D picture and uh, it will connect with the photo which is provided on the document. So uh, it's like uh, very secure in this point. So you are checking with the camera with the person and the, the person on the uh, the picture of the card is the exactly. same or not. Yes. Then you can verify the people. Exactly. Yes, we are matching 3D photo with 2D photo on the document. Like college, 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 college. So if uh, if the mm -hmm. cards don't have the picture of the person, you cannot do the ID ver uh, verification. Yes, because we are not sure that it's the uh, same uh, person stays on mm -hmm. the front of the camera. We can mm -hmm. check, we can see the date of birth, we can see uh, the date of expiry, we can see the watermarks, but we will not uh, see the picture of the person. So mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, uh, age restricted products you have to have a photo okay i understand mm. Mm. It makes sense. Mm. but so, in the case let's say and it's a working places it, it can be uh, set up and ma made for different use cases so for the age mm. restricted we need to check the photo on the document but if it's an industry and we have a database of the workers, maybe we don't need the photo on the card because it mm -hmm. has a photo in the base and the uh, real face of the human with the document will be compared with photo in the base. So in different use cases, it can be made different. So it depends on the, uh, technical, assignment. the technical assignment, right? Okay, I understand. Uh, we should also say that the market for vending machines is like very huge. For example, <clears throat> we are meeting with the one company uh, from UK that handles 1,100 vending machines. And once uh, they want to sell any pharmacy or any uh, CBD product through their vending machine, and if only we take 2 or 3% uh, of this market, that is a very, very huge number. Uh, so now, now, so the, you already the installed the, your devices to the in Esto, uh, Estonia's vending machines. So how many vending machines do you install right now? Uh, we are not installed any machine yet. It's only MVP and it's been done on the previous week. We took it to the startup day event. We uh, showed the solution to the ministry and uh, uh, the ministry of uh, business and techno in innovation technologies in Estonia. He said that it's a new uh, approach. approach of identity verification and it's a really good idea. Okay, two questions. 
Okay. Yep. First, when your product will be in the market? It uh, depends on the legal issues because, for example, if we talk about CBD products, well, then maybe, but, but, but you can give it just a rough, rough idea one year, two years, five years, whatever. Okay, uh, so if we talk about CBD products, it can be on the market within three, four months. Maximum. All right, so anyway, next year, next year, with the, uh, the end of this year, or the latest next year, right? Second, exactly. you are targeting to the supplier or the vending machine. Yep. Uh, so the company is set up a vending machine in many places. They will be the target, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, actually, in, in Japan, there's sort of local company, like a Fukuoka-based sort of a supplier and the sort of Tokyo-based supplier. And we might be able to find uh, that these connections. Once you're ready, we, we just keep in touch. Let us know. Then we can take actions. Arigato. 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 <laughs> Okay, thank you thank so much you. for your presentation. So please uh, let us know when you're ready to, uh, if your product is ready for the market. Sure, we will inform. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So the next presenter is uh, Alford. Alford? Hello. Hello. Oh. Hi. Hi. Can you see my screen? Yep, we do. Yep. So, hi. Uh, my name is Perken. I am from Alfort, the next generation gold bank. So we are building a digital uh, new generation uh, style of bank. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> so the problem that uh, we are solving is uh, is global, uh, and this is a massive uh, currency printing. So all governments uh, in the world are, are printing massively uh, additional currency, that is money, and, uh, and that's, this affects uh, all, all the people in the world. So if we look at the numbers, then during the last year, uh, more currency has been printed than all the previous histories together. So that means uh, quite high uh, uh, number of in inflation. If we see the numbers, uh, then uh, more and more people have their savings just sitting on their bank accounts. So um, that, that means that uh, basically their savings or their money is burning and losing its uh, value and purchasing power. And uh, this is definitely one of the biggest issues that many people face. <clears throat> There are also different solutions uh, how to uh, solve it, but uh, most people are not aware of it, aware of it and uh, they seem to be also quite uh, difficult to understand. But the good news is that uh, throughout history, uh, gold has been one of the best protections against inflation. And this is one of the safest bets that one can, can do. So uh, the, the other thing with gold is that um, mo most people are aware of the physical gold, that is like the gold bars or the gold coins. Uh, but uh, it's uh, not very uh, easy to, uh, to put your savings in physical products, and it's also quite uh, expensive. So uh, the solution is uh, digital gold, but currently there is no easy to uh, use solution for mainly like retail investors or the average people. So what we do at Offert is that we make uh, uh, gold in digital for form easy to everybody. So basically even a grandma can use it. Uh, so what we have done is that uh, we took physical investment gold uh, and we built it on distributed ledger technology. Uh, basically, this is something similar to um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, the technology behind it. But, um, but the technology that we use uh, is newer than Bitcoin uses. Uh, it's more environmental friendly. Uh, it's faster and also it's uh, cheaper uh, in the means of uh, uh, the network fees. 
And what we did is that our unique selling proposition is that we put it on e-commerce platform. So basically this runs on eShop uh, and most people have bought anything from eShop so they, they know how it works and they can use it. So here it is how it looks. Uh, the MVP is ready. So the product is uh, already running for a few months. We have uh, hundreds of uh, paying users already and it's uh, extremely easy. And the average order sum has been around 300 euros. Um, as it's run, running on e-commerce, uh, we are currently offering uh, two uh, payment uh, solutions. We have instant wire payment. That means that uh, this is bank uh, payment, but uh, we are cooperating with one European uh, uh, payment startup and uh, we, they have worked out the solution that is instant. So basically we don't have to wait the money to be transferred on the account it, it's it has it, it's making like instantly the other thing what we have is we have automatic integration with crypt, cryptocurrency payments so basically if uh, uh, somebody owns any cryptocurrency and uh, he or she wants to exchange it to gold then it can be done extremely easily through our alpha platform and we also uh, have a card payment uh, option available soon so here you can see how it uh, how it uh, looks like. Uh, if customer has uh, bought any gold in digital form, he can see how many uh, gold grams he has, how what is the current world market value uh, value, and what is the profit and loss uh, from the time he uh, bought the gold. And here it can be really easily to buy additional gold, sell it like partially or in total the whole sum, or withdraw it as a physical gold bar. And uh, the the withdrawal works also through e-commerce solution. So basically customer can choose which kind of gold bar he wants to have, and he can redeem it already from one gram. And this is the absolute lowest minimum that uh, can be offered to the customers. Uh, there, there are a few something similar options, but they're not working on e-commerce. Uh, and the lowest minimum is like uh, one ounce. So basically it's like 31 times higher so as our solution is mainly meant for retail investors, we want to offer uh, the best conditions what can be offered. And what we are doing here is that we are building the whole ecosystem. Uh, our aim is to give gold like many different real use cases. Uh, and the, the one issue with gold is currently, if we are comparing it, for instance, with Bitcoin, is that uh, gold doesn't have many use cases. So uh, what we do is that we are solving this problem. And uh, currently we have started with MEP, the buy, sell and withdraw of the investment gold. And the, in the upcoming year, we are planning to add uh, interest possibilities. So basically customers who have invested in gold, they can stake the gold on our platform and earn additional interest on it. Also, we want to start offering a possibility to take a loan that is backed by the gold that customers and invested in. Uh, so the gold will be acted as a collateral and uh, the fourth thing that is uh, one of the most important uh, and the coolest thing for me is that uh, we are going to offer solution to pay with gold. So basically, if there are some companies that uh, are uh, aiming to uh, accept gold as a payment, then we can make it extremely easy and fast to make the transaction within just one or two seconds. The timing is extremely good because if we're seeing uh, the currencies like uh, dollars, uh, yens, uh, euros and everything, uh, they are losing its value because of the currency printing and inflation and uh, the demand for digital gold has increased significantly. So this shows that we are on the right track and uh, more and more people are looking on alternatives how to uh, protect themselves. Uh, the uh, gold uh, market uh, size or market cap for uh, for uh, retail or private investors uh, for investment gold is quite big. Uh, on global scale, it's two trillion, and for the whole gold mar world market size is around ten trillion. So uh, investment gold is uh, around uh, two two trillions. And in Europe, the market size is approximately 750 billion. And in Japan, it's almost uh, 70 billion. So it's quite a quite big market share. And also the trading volumes are much, much bigger. So this is only the gold like uh, owning world, uh, world market size. So as I said previously, our uh, uh, main customers are Sorry retail for investors. Sorry for interrupting, but we have only seven minutes. So we would yes. like to move on to this uh, discussion section. 
Yes, so uh, I will, uh, just, just two minutes, please. I will go through a few more slides. Thanks. So this uh, retail investors are our main uh, target. And uh, also the, we are approaching customers through different segments with our own platform. Also, we are going to cooperate with different digital asset exchanges and cooperation with different banks. Our business model is that we earn 2 to 8% commissions from all the transactions. It, it depends on the different transa transactions. And uh, compared to the competitors, we are much easier to use. All the processors are much faster and we are also using the newest technology. And we have a very advanced uh, team, uh, uh, the key, four key members and uh, altogether 11 uh, team members. And we have also very experienced advisors on international level. We're also backed uh, by uh, 64 angel investors. Uh, so that shows that uh, investors are believing what we're doing. And we are quite uh, many achievements as well. We have all the licenses. We have made already the first in investing rounds and we have MVP ready. And we're also currently starting to scale quite uh, significantly. And we are currently making the second capital raising round in October. That goes mainly for sales and marketing uh, and team expansion. And we're also uh, been featured in different uh, bigger uh, uh, channels like Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance, Market Watch, and Business Insider. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentations. So um, I have questions. Uh, so I, under I understand that the user of the offer can exchange to the physical gold bar. So who possesses the physical gold bar? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we are cooperating in, a, in Europe in one of the biggest uh, gold uh, wholesalers. Uh, they also have uh, currently uh, representatives uh, in uh, Singapore and in US as well, but not, uh, not in Japan. So uh, we are storing this gold physically in uh, different locations in Europe. And what we do is that we also publish uh, all uh, the audits for the physical gold that is stored in the vault. So basically all the gold that is owned by our customers, they are the owners, not us, and uh, not the gold provider. And uh, we are storing this gold physically. So the, in that case, is, uh, the OHOT should have the gold provider in Japan as well? Yes, correct. This should be the most... Uh, like Otherwise, the like, Japanese user can have to buy the... The, uh, with the expensive price, expensive, uh, uh, the gold with the expensive price, right? Actually, we can also store it in Europe, but I, I think in the means of like trustworthiness uh, and everything, uh, it's easier to have a local partner in Japan, yes. Okay, thank you. So you mean that this the European gold supplier can accept the offer, right? Because they, they, somebody, maybe I, give it to the, this offer to this, this through your platform to the discord supplier they they are happy and they give it to the real physical gold bra am i right correct all right so they are the one of the sort of the customer or they are sort of partner right yes correct okay understand that and uh, this offer this is similar to the like nft or the security token uh, actually not. Uh, yes, we are. Technically, we are a virtual currency. We have all the licenses in Europe as well, as well uh, but uh, we, are, we are not like an NFT or security. We have uh, all the like, uh, legal uh, uh, statements that uh, say that we are, we are not a security. We are a virtual currency and uh, for that we need a license that we already have. Okay, uh, that's interesting. So the, the, your products are more similar to the Bitcoin, but the Bitcoin without any endorsement, maybe the endorsement of the blockchain. But in, in your cases, all four coin is endorsed by the gold, value of the gold. Correct. Right? I Correct. see, I understand that. And this is running on e-commerce. So basically we are the first company in the world who did this. Oh. There are currently a few like uh, gold packed cryptocurrencies, but they can be only bought through uh, like uh, these cryptocurrency exchanges. But for most people, it's quite difficult uh, and they're not understanding how it works. So basic, basically what we did that is that we put this on e-commerce and uh, this works like within, within two minutes, customer can uh, invest in digital gold that is technically cryptocurrency. And uh, this takes only a few minutes. 
I, I think the, you know, the, in the past, I think the 1970, US dollar is endorsed by the gold before the Nixon shock. I think that I just, it, it, it reminded me that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So interesting, and uh, I, I I don't have a gold, but I don't have a gold. Yeah, maybe your service can satisfy my desire, my dream. Yeah. Very good. I'm happy to hear yeah, it. You are, you, yeah, you are the dream maker. Yeah, wonderful. So <laughs> sorry, if we expand a business in Japan, uh, as Yoshi mentioned, maybe you need a sort of like a, a partner uh, with as a sort of gold, real gold supplier. Anything else? Any? What kind of the, the partner so they, you, you are looking for in Japan? Yeah, that's correct that we are looking for a partner in Japan. In that case, if we are going to expand there and, and uh, the partner should be definitely re reliable and have quite a good track record because trustworthiness is extremely important in our yeah, industry. But, uh, what, yeah, what kind of company, what kind of entity? Can you give me some idea? Uh, some company who is dealing with the investment gold uh, wholesales and uh, who, who is able to offer uh, very secure storing opportunities. Stock exchange? No. No, definitely. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that this is sort of the private market and uh, not like a, a London stock exchange. This is outside this kind of market, right? Yeah, and about yeah. some experiences. Yes, so, but so, we also have some plans for business to business. Uh, for instance, collabor collaboration with uh, different, uh, like traditional banks, because the uh, uh, banks have the customer base, and we can offer a very easy to use and uh, flexible option for for gold. For the bank, maybe for the, some investment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we will talk to the bank first. Yeah, maybe yeah. first we talk to Mizuho Bank, the big, big, big bank. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think they're much bigger than the Bank of Estonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? That's it. No, not it. So then, after we contact the bank, and uh, so we we come back to you. Okay. Yes. Thank so you very much. See what what kind of reaction they have. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Take much care. for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So we have the last, uh, we have the final presenter, uh, presenter today. Correct? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we That's do. great. Okay. So let me share my screen as well. So I hope you can see the slides. You can nod if you can see. Yep, yep, we can see. Thank you. So uh, we are Griplect and uh, my name is Marek. Um, our, our idea started uh, from the founders uh, because all the founders have uh, collected something uh, back in the days when they were really young. For example, baseball cards, uh, sports cards, coins, marks, etc. And uh, and uh, the problem that we are solving actually is that um, in the last 25 or 25 years, when uh, internet has been around, there actually hasn't been a possible way to track ownership of uh, digital collectibles. Uh, but when uh, blockchain technology came around. Um, it was again possible for platforms to track ownership of uh, dig digital assets or, or collectibles. And uh, all of uh, actually, which all brought us to NFTs, uh, which are unique and they have like a digital uh, version of a certificate stamped by the creator. And um, we uh, hooked this technology and NFT standards to sports because we all, uh, all the founders, we love sports and we love basketball. And it was our pilot project to go with the basketball NFTs. And we also know that the sports clubs do not have an access to this NFT market. And they're always looking new ways to engage with fans and they're really underfunded. And they're, so this is a, like a new innovative way to get uh, funds from the fans. 
So we actually built Griplect. So Griplect is a platform to connect uh, fans, uh, with their favorite sports clubs or their favorite uh, uh, sports sportsmen. So it's a totally new way to raise funds for sports clubs, especially in the pandemic time, because uh, people can't go to the uh, courts and watch the games. So it's a new, uh, new, totally new way to engage with fans. And um, of course, the promotion of the NFTs uh, is the, doing the sports clubs and the leagues. So it's, uh, uh, it's their job to drive their marketing engine uh, to communicate this funding possibility. So we already have added some gamification features. For example, we sell uh, this kind of loot boxes. So if you buy a loot box from our platform, uh, then you get the NFT based on the probability. So uh, every so often we put the limited number of packs. Uh, it depends uh, which collections they are. Are they rare, common or legendary uh, up for sale? And then you will get the token uh, from that pack. You can open it as well. So it's a, like a gamification feature that we have added. They can show off uh, their collections to each other. For example, uh, they can open their uh, mobile phone and show, hey, this is my collection of this, that team and uh, that players. So you can see them and you can see uh, them on 3D view as, view as well. So it's kind of a cool feature because back in the old days when you, you had the albums at home, they're collecting dust on the shelves now. People are going like digitalizing the NFTs and all the, all the tokens and sports cards as well. Uh, we will have a marketplace in a month in October because uh, in a month we will actually will go live with eight professional teams. Uh, we have uh, partnered up with the uh, Estonian uh, Basketball Association as well. Our business model is highly scalable. We actually, our main goal is to give away money to sports clubs because the issue is that the sports are underfunded. So after the NFT sale, we gave out 70% uh, uh, to, to the sports clubs. Uh, on the aftermarket, we will have a 5% fee on every uh, aftermarket transaction. And in the future, we will have uh, microtransactions uh, on the platform and also monthly subscriptions to upgrade uh, and to etc. to your profile to, to showcases and, and so on. Uh, how we get our customers? Uh, mostly through clubs. They have their social media platforms and also League because League gives the credibility. Uh, we will have a uh, word of mouth. Users share their uh, tokens and NFTs on the social media and also uh, on Discord, uh, building their community uh, of Cryptlect. Uh, the market is big. There's, uh, for example, for basketball fans, there are around uh, 4 billion basketball fans uh, globally. Uh, so our, it's our traction here. In May, we went live. We did a two week pilot with the Estonian champion. Uh, 75 NFTs were added to the platform and all of them were sold in a few days. We got 45 fans who registered on site. We made about 1,100 revenues and uh, 1,100 euros revenue. And now we have partnered up with the Estonian Basketball Association to go live in October with eight professional teams. And, uh, and we already have discussions with the biggest European major league uh, major teams from Russia and Lithuania. Uh, our vision is to become the go-to platform to connect people with their favorite teams and players. And we have a roadmap. Uh, for example, this year, we want to go live with the Estonian league and also add some gamification uh, features. Next year, we want to scale the new markets. And uh, 2023, we want to build Fantasy League and 20, 24 uh, other sports and uh, in the uh, future uh, at non-sports products as well. Uh, our community loves us. Uh, even people are uh, sharing NFTs on their social media. Uh, they want to ask when other teams are coming to the platform, they show the collections on the streets uh, in mobile phones to each other. And, and it's, uh, it's really cool. People, people loved it. They own that uh, players and uh, they support them. We have an amazing team of four founders. Uh, we have uh, 17 years of business development experience and we have uh, 10 years of uh, uh, software development experience. And then you have a designer who has actually experienced in uh, designing of playing cards. And uh, we have uh, key mentors and advisors as well. At the moment, we're looking uh, for funding for 350 to 400K to get the 12 to 15 months of runway. So we'll uh, hire uh, new developers and uh, want to scale the new markets as well. 
So this is uh, Kripleck. Thank you. I'm ready to answer your, for your questions. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentations. So we check the NFT market in the spot. Uh, actually, the, now the uh, NBA in the United States has a, the NFT market, which is a sub shot. So could I'm you tell us that. The, 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 yeah, differentiation and the advantage of the, the compared to the, the top shot? So. Yes, so um, NBA Topshot is doing uh, video NFTs. Uh, so basically they're doing uh, video shots of players uh, hitting trees or doing tanks and then selling them. And uh, it's a totally um, other uh, league. It's a NBA league, which gives the credibility. And uh, our uh, main goal is to help uh, sports and the, with their funding. So we give the major uh, revenue we give away. And we're all uh, also uh, on another blockchain. Uh, NBA Topshot is on Flow blockchain. It's a totally private blockchain. We we were on Ethereum blockchain, but now we moved to Cardano blockchain as well. And uh, our goal uh, in the future is to give the fans the possibility to, to choose. For example, if we're talking about new jersey of a team, or if there's some other questions that the team or the manager wants to ask from the fans, hey, what we should do? And then the fans on Kripleck can decide, uh, for example, I don't know, is the jersey red or white or black, so etc. So that's our, that's our goal to go uh, further into connecting fans and sports clubs as well. We're not, we, we, we do not want to become a, 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 like an NFT marketplace, a global, global NFT marketplace. Thank you. So with your services, so the, the, the sports team has more like intellectual communication with fans and also like fans can feel more close, close to the, the sports team. It's, yes. It, it's like that. Mm. Correct. So, but as for the, like, uh, the packages that you sell, it's about what, what kind of the packages will be? It will be like uh, the the videos or what, what, what kind of package do you sell? Yeah, so there, there can be like different, uh, for example, moments or emotions, what the player is doing uh, on that game. Uh, we even have like a hall of fame, if uh, like a card, if the player or the club has uh, some historical player that everybody know, then we can put it on the card as well and sell it. But the packs can go from like uh, like one uh, card pack, two card pack, three part, uh, four card packs, and then you will get, and you can open it, and then you will get the, like a NFT uh, from the loot box as well. Wide basketball. Uh, by the way, the Caliph is a chocolate company. Oh no, use the Sorry. PC Caliph. BC Caliph. Caliph is a chocolate or not? Uh, so the first question, why basketball? Uh, uh, basketball, because um, the BC Caliph uh, uh, had a, a PR manager who has uh, been familiar with the NFT and also with the NBA Top Shot. So that, that was easier uh, for us to go with uh, basketball. And of course, we, we all love to play basketball as well. So it was uh, our way uh, to first uh, do the decision to go with basketball. And of course, basketball in Estonia, uh, the social media that they're doing with fans and the interaction with fans is, is pretty good. But uh, what was the second question? PC Kalev is... No, no, no. I'm asking just Kalev. Kalev is the name of the location or the name of the company. I'm just wondering. It's the name of the sports club, basketball sports club. I think the oh. question here was also that Kalev is also a chocolate brand. So which one is it then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> chocolate. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's different. Okay, so, yeah, they're different. Yeah, they're different. Okay, yeah. 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 Because the Caliph chocolate is so famous in Japan. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so, what 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 is the most popular sport in Estonia? The it's a football or the ice hockey or or basketball. Just for my for, for my point of view, I can say it's basketball uh, and volleyball as well. 
ice here in the center. But still, the, the, also the basketball is so popular, but underfunded. Yes, all sports are underfunded. <laughs> all right. I understand that, yeah. So, yep, yep, please. So, so when do you uh, plan to the launch the your services? Uh, we actually are live at the moment. You can go on our platform, see it. Uh, but in October uh, first week, so in a month, uh, October 7th or 8th, October, we will go and uh, launch with the eight professional uh, basketball teams. So, so there will be uh, there, there will be around 300, uh, 400 packs, uh, and then fans can buy them. So, so you then can buy and sell the the digital cards in your the platform yes and uh, and we have uh, built the platform like this that's a, like a white label platform so we can integrate it with uh, any other sports as well and the location doesn't matter for us uh so it's some for for example if you want to build like uh, volleyball.cryptech.com it's e it's it's easy for us to put the platform on in a week or so is if it's a basketball if it's a volleyball if it's a wrc if it's a I don't know what tennis, whatever. So it's easy to integrate. Yeah, uh, in in Japanese market, yeah, so you are looking for such a sports club that they are interested in using your services. Correct. If they're looking for an innovative way uh, to connect with fans and they get the alternative funding uh, and they go into the NFT world, yes, then we would love to interact with them and uh, and also go for the leagues as well, maybe. So simply speaking, if we can find one one team, then first the first step is clear. First is clear, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I I, I think the maybe basketball, my feeling, because uh, in Japan the, uh, the baseball and the football are so popular. But mm -hmm. yesterday, Japanese football team lost against Oman. Incredible. Oh. <laughs> yeah, against Oman one two zero, it's it, it, it's incredible, right? But but anyway, it's it's more popular. But because these two sports are so popular, all the rights are protected by some company. Because this is a new business to the this sort of you know football team or the baseball team, and I think that this sort of you know sort of stakeholder are quite you know the strong. Then maybe the, I think the basketball has more chance to do that, and uh, so we might be able to contact the one basketball team in Fukuoka. What's the name of the team? Rising, rising, the rising, right? Rising, rising Yeah, rising Fukuoka. Sorry, we we don't know the name. We know the existing name. <laughs> it, it means uh, it is not so popular, but uh, I think the same. Yeah, and because uh, they are not so popular. Yeah, but then they might have a new idea. I think that it might have a you know good opportunity to them. Yeah. So do you have any connections with the Japan Japanese leagues as well, like basketball leagues, for example? That uh, the rising yeah. is uh, rising club is uh, like attending with the leagues as well. I I guess so. I I think that, that if we contact on, on the top of the league, so that there was more sort of you know the more complicated thing. So we, we can talk to the one team and uh, then we will understand what is the difficulty, what is the challenge that, so that whether we can collaborate with the, this team only or we have to talk to the league, etc., etc. Because sure. all the right yeah, is quite protected, but it is less protected compared to the baseball and football. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and also the parkour, you know the parkour. Parkour? Yeah. You don't, you don't know the parkour? <laughs> they like, uh, how do you say that? P-A-R-K-O-U-R, parkour. Ah, parkour, yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, parkour, yeah. I think that- That I know, yeah. Yeah, they, because in Japan, they, this parkour community is not well organized. Maybe that is another opportunity, we'll talk to them. We know we know the guy very well. All right. That's cool. Yeah. Thank Good you. Opportunity. So they, once we have some news, come back to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you.
So now uh, we are now done with all the program for today. So thank you so much for your participation. Uh, we posted the questionnaire for this event on the chat box. So please feel some minutes to give us your feedback and we can improve our online events for the in the future. And thank you again for your present. Uh, I mean, thank you. Thank you again for your time today and see you soon in the next our online event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.